Hi everybody, hope you're well. Today we'll read from a book titled Agadir, Building the Modern Acropolis, edited by Tom Avermat and Maxim Zuag and published by Pat Books. On the 29th of February 1960, a catastrophic earthquake devastated the Moroccan coastal city of Agadir. Almost a third of the population lost their lives. The world was stunned and the reconstruction of Agadir became an unprecedented undertaking of international solidarity. A newly developed urban planning process enabled numerous architects from Morocco and around the world to work simultaneously on the planning of a new city. They experimented with new housing typologies that mediated between ultra-modern and traditional housing forms, complemented by innovative public infrastructure. The result was an amazing new urban reality, a modern Afropolis. The project for the urban design of Agadir started under the most ambitious of circumstances. In his famous speech following the earthquake, the Moroccan king Mohammed V envisioned the reconstruction of Agadir as not only an act of its recovery from the rubble, but also as part of a larger project of building the country anew as a modern society of forward-looking citizens. This vast political ambition would be echoed in the proposals and projects of architects and urban designers for the reconstructed city. Many of them conceived of Agadir as an innovative urban environment, a true modern acropolis for the modern citizenry of a nation-state that had claimed its independence only a few years earlier. Its destruction offered them a blank sheet on which to visualize urban forms and atmospheres that would live up to these enormous spatial and social aspirations. Today, Agadir's buildings and urban fabric testify to the reconstruction as an ambitious architectural and social enterprise. Urban designers and architects envisage the most radically modern environments possible for the city's new citizens. They delivered a novel urban model with a vast administrative and commercial pole at the Centre Urbain, combined with smaller, well-equipped neighborhood centers such as the district of nouveau talbogit The planners were dedicated to offering the new citizens a variety of public spaces, multi-level plazas, new streets and parks, with innovative combinations of buildings and public spaces. Interesting examples of the latter are the administrative center combining a megastructure of office buildings with a park and Building A, which hybridized housing with interior shopping streets and a souk. At the level of commercial spaces, Agadir did not temper its ambitions. The multi-level interior market and the large supermarket in the Centre Urbain, the monumental local commercial center in nouveau talbogit and the Marché en Gros wholesale market are but a few examples of the way in which the new Afropolis was planned as a modern center for trade. The new Moroccan citizens were not only imagined as milling around this state-of-the-art public and commercial spaces, but also as dwelling in a manner both rooted and progressive. In the hands of international and Moroccan architects, the city of Agadir became a veritable laboratory for housing. Generous outdoor spaces seen to resonate with the vernacular dwelling patterns of the inhabitants were combined with innovative apartment layouts in unprecedented collective housing typologies. Experimental single-family houses were designed to offer new ways of living whilst recalling, albeit relatively lightly, more traditional patterns of living organized around cooling shaded courtyards. Sixty years after the reconstruction of the earthquake-hit city, it is clear that the enormous expectations regarding the public, collective and private life of the citizens of Agadir were not met. 
to phrase it differently, the reality of the people's lives seems to have been out of step with the progressive and reforming ambitions of politicians, urban planners and architects. The unrealistic hope that the people of Agadir would, in the short and challenging moment of the reconstruction, transform into the most modern citizens possible never materialized. Moreover, this asynchronicity between social ambitions and social lives had unanticipated effects. The inhabitants resolved the deviating relationship between their conventional social practices and the avant-garde urban and architectural environments they were given to inhabit by developing a set of tactics. These devices ranged from a radical decoupling of spatial configuration and social use, resulting, for instance, in the displacement of shopping practices from the centre urbain to peripheral local centres and to a more intrusive transformation of the materiality and speciality of public and private spaces of the city, so as to align them with the reality of the everyday practices. In other words, the citizens claimed their places of residence through a set of techniques and practices of appropriation that highlights their informal agency. Retrospectively, it seems that the city of Agadir silently accommodated all these different tactics, incorporating their traces in the weathering, adaptations and transformations of its modern fabric. Since the 1960s, the many recalibrations and reinterpretations to which the architecture of Agadir has been subjected stand witness to the radicality of this modern project. On the one hand, its militant progressiveness has elicited various degrees of mediation in order to suit the demands of everyday life. On the other hand, the alterations and adaptations that resulted from the many processes of intermediation can also be seen as proof of a double resilience. They speak both of the capacity of architecture to incorporate change and of that of users to recalibrate the configurations of space, form and material to suit their own needs. In other words, the resilience of the residential architectures of Agadir stands for two complementary phenomena. Firstly, the post-earthquake housing production, as governed by the Norm Agadir 1960, can be understood as a modernist Western imposition upon native ways of life. It represents an attempt to render them more efficient, clear-cut and transparent to reason. In that respect, this modern architecture can be seen as an expression of over-rationalization, an appeal to reason that is misjudged inasmuch as it assumes, wrongly it turns out, that it can control and fulfill people's needs and aspirations. Secondly, a direct correlation can be observed between transformation and ownership, between the degrees of freedom to change and adapt and the extent of actual appropriation. Privately owned buildings or private dwellings in a multi-occupancy situation bear the brunt of the changes sometimes beyond recognition to the original modernist fabric. The architectural expressions of appropriation occur in relation both to large-scale collective and public areas and to micro-adjustments to the private realm. The aim of these transformations is to find a midway compromise between the modernist vision of architects and the more conservative expectations of the citizens of Agadir in relation to their own habitat. The two-way resilience of design and use manifests itself architecturally in a variety of ways and at a range of scales. The most pervasive are the micro-transformations that can be identified at points of access to and encounter between public and private areas, doors, fences and the external surfaces of private properties. With the addition of screens, railings, colors, styles, etc., the originally radical, perhaps harsh, modernism of the various buildings is adjusted into a neo-vernacular hybrid style. 
Such microtransformations can be identified across the new city, in the ostensibly modernist dwellings in the city center, in the upmarket villas of the secteur résidentiel, and the working class dwellings of Nouveau Talbogit and the Quartier International Sud. At mid scale, the transformations contaminate entire buildings. This is very much the case for the grid Ecochart, wherein the anticipated building capacity to accommodate changes is challenged by the creativity of pragmatic improvisation. Finally, a macro level of resilience can also be identified at the scale of the entire city. In time, following their culturally instilled aspirations, people moved from the 1960s modern center to newer peripheries where they felt enabled to cultivate traditional ways of dwelling and land ownership patterns. The widespread aspiration to move out of modernist central apartments and into suburban houses with a patio has changed the character of all affected neighborhoods and has created new geographies of urbanity across the Agadir municipal territory. Urban liveliness has followed domestic livability. Ask for the book at your local bookstore. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.